Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. It's World Card Making Day and I've been asked by Simon Says Stamp to represent the United States of America. Actually, I, I work for Simon and I was the person who had time in a sketch, so. That said, when they asked me, I imagined that scene in the movie The American President when President Shepard invites Sidney Ellen Wade to accompany him to a state dinner and her response. I would like to recreate that for you in a dramatic reading. The president has asked me to join him in representing our country. I am honored. I am equal to the task. I won't let you down, sir. And scene. Stick around because my card features masking, stamping, Copic coloring. And not only that, I'm going to have a link below the video so you can see what other country representatives have done with the exact same stamp set. So let's, uh, let's cut the dramatic acting and get to stamping. I mean, let's be real. I might've missed my calling. All silliness aside, I am very excited to share this card project with you today. It is a very simple process to mask and keep your coloring simple. It's basically a one layer card, except that it's popped up, but let's hop in and take a look at the products. So here's a look at the supplies I'm using today. I have Chunky Christmas, designed by yours truly. And although this set does have coordinating dies, I do not have them in my hot little hands. So what I'm gonna do today is get creative and do some masking. For my sentiment, I'm gonna be using some of the Christmas sentiment strips also that I designed. I've got my masking magic here from Gina K Designs and some crystalline drops also from Gina. I've got some Memento Tuxedo Black because I'm going to do some really simple Copic coloring. And then for cardstock, I've got some Audrey Blue from Simon Says Stamp and some Nina Solar White in the Classic Crest 110 pound. So those are the basic supplies. Let's get started with the project. So the next thing I need to do is take a piece of Masking Magic. And what I'm gonna do here, just gonna cut a little piece here like this. And I'm just gonna pop this here. I'm gonna use this big thick stamp. I'm gonna take this off. And all I'm gonna do is just pop it right there so it kind of splits the difference. I'll just store the extra. I just keep my masking magic inside a package like that. All right, pick it up. And all I'm going to do is take my Memento ink and just stamp that down. Give it a little press. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that looks really good. Clean that off a little. Now I've got this lovely thing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out. But actually for the sake of video and time, I've already done one off camera and let that dry. I am gonna be die cutting this, so I'm not too worried if it's perfect. Um, I think that will be fine. And I'm going to pick that up. I'll just turn this so it's easier to see. Oh, it did leave, a little, did leave a little wetness behind, but I think that'll be okay. All right, I'm gonna ink up with the Memento and let's give that a nice press. And you know what? I think I'm going to stamp it one more time just to get a really inky, solid image. The beauty of the Misty, allowing me to stamp twice in the exact same location. I tell you, it never gets old. So what I'm going to do here is just take the backer off of the mask. And then I am going to position this. Just pop that right there so that it lines up right there. That looks great. I'm gonna grab the holly berries, or the leaves and the berries, and I'm going to stamp this in two locations. First, I'm gonna have it be, you know, like right over here, kind of just coming off the J. I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up. I'm gonna turn this just so everything stays in camera. All right, picking it up. Nice even pressure here, transferring the ink. 
I'm going to stamp it one more time. I figure because I stamped the joy twice, I will also stamp this twice. Wonderful. All right, and I'm going to clean this off really well. Right there. Oh, got a little hair in there. I don't, I don't want to stamp my hair. Let's get that out of the way. All right, I think that'll look nice. Pick that up. And again, I'm going to turn this, reposition my cardstock, ink this up, and stamp. And of course, the masks are allowing me to create one continuous image where it will appear that the word joy is in the foreground. I'm going to stamp that again, like this, right, picking that up. stamping that down. What we're going to do is we're going to take the mask off so you can see how cute my little joy word is with the peel and the reveal. So now you can see that it looks like the berries are stamped right behind the word joy. Now there's a little tiny gap in there and I think what I'm going to do, I have this uh, Pilot pen, which is really great, and all I'm going to do, I'm just going to color that in. So let's, let's go over it with the black. And I actually think on this side too, I could go in just a tiny little bit right there, just to kind of cover up that imperfection. All right, next we'll start coloring. So here's what's great about how simple we're going to keep this. I am using two colors. I'm going to start with, no, I don't want that one. I'm going to start with my lighter color. There we go. Let's do that. I'm going to start with my lighter color and I'm just going to color in my letters. I'm going to do one at a time just so that this stays wet at the bottom while I bring in the other color. One of the things that I really love about this image and this style of image is the thick lines. I'm not fantastic at coloring. It's kind of hard for me to stay in the lines, but when you have really, really thick images like this, or well, images with really thick outlines, it makes it so much easier. And I love that. Here I'm just going to take my tip to tip to kind of create that third color in there, just for a really simple blend. This is not meant to be, you know, earth shattering blending. Come back over here a little bit to darken that up. And again, touch the tip and just sort of draw that up. Just like that. And that's all I'm doing. It's very simple coloring. In fact, this marker is getting a little dry. All right, I'm just trying to keep that line consistent. It doesn't have to be perfect. So create that one, push up. All right. Now I did notice that I actually went outside of the thick chunky line and I'm gonna grab a colorless blender, kind of fix that up a little. All right, I am going to actually take my colorless blender. I have a chisel nib on one side, so I'm just gonna push this in. It'll kind of work like an eraser. I'm just kind of pushing that in, get that blue out of there. It just kind of works to lift the color, and especially does, uh, it does a better job when it's drier. All right, so that looks pretty good. My red markers, I've also replaced the chisel nibs with these fine nibs so that I can come in here and have a little more control. But, and then I'll just do a little shading on the berries just to give it a little dimension. Looks nice, maybe blend over it a little bit. On that guy. And then I'll do the same over here. And there are the berries.
right, and now I will just add green to the leaves. I'm just gonna color that in like this. Keep it really simple. I don't have a ton of these sort of, uh, not really foresty greens, but I have enough to be dangerous. And so that is what we're gonna do. Also, don't be afraid to turn your paper. I always have to turn my paper when I'm coloring because I like to brush, brush, I like to color away from my body and not come towards. I think part of it's because I hold my pen kind of strange and it helps me to see where I'm actually placing the marker down. So we'll do a little bit like that. Maybe I'll go a little bit more over like that. And then I will repeat, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go over that a little bit more to get a little more depth. I think I'll do the same thing here. And I will just come in here like that. Great. Okay, and then I'll repeat for the other side. I'm using one of my A2 layers dies from Waffle Flower Crafts to go ahead and cut this panel out. I will cut that out off camera and be right back to finish creating the card. So I went ahead and used one of these sentiment label dies to cut out this sentiment joy to the world. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut off the small joy. Let's see if I can get in close enough to do this. I think I can do this by hand and I think we're gonna be just fine. I'm just gonna get as close as I can and snip. And then I'll come to the other side, same thing, get close to that D and snip. So these pre-printed sentiment strips, which I absolutely love, they are printed on white cardstock. So they get this white core and if you want to just make it look like it's on black cardstock, just take any dark marker and color and color over the sides, and it will give you this, this look of black solid core. Just work your way, just work your way around black cardstock. All right. All right, let's get that on the back. Great. So now I have foam tape on my panel. Time to prep the card base. Couple lines there. Fold this down and give that a press. Oh, that doesn't, there we go. And I always like to tape my card bases closed just because I want them to stay flat. So I'll take a little piece of purple tape, just pop that in there so that stays flat. Look down at all four corners, get that lined up, and press. Look at that. Joy to the world. Isn't that sweet? So simple. To finish off the card, I'm going to add some crystalline drops to the berries because I thought that would be really cute. I always like to start. Uh, the flow on something else to make sure oh yeah because that was a big globby and all I'm gonna do is just squeeze a little on here right there onto that berry and that berry and then I like to keep a toothpick just like if you were putting frosting on a cookie just kind of move it around a little bit while it's still wet get it right into the corners make sure there's no bubbles and that looks good and just a little dollop right there all right so you can see it's in there and when that dries it will be all shiny and clear and that is my finished card project so a little bit of masking is all that's needed you don't have to have dyes to create something like this and I really love how this card project turned out I think it's very cheery and I love the blue as a holiday color Again, all links are below, so if you want to check out the Simon Says Stamp blog to see the other country representatives and what they created with the stamp set, by all means, do. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. 
Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.